Hello, Julie here. Um, I am hoping that today you might get the chance to meet somebody who lives in my house with me. I have put out a tempting array of treats there just under my hand in the hope they might join us, but they're pretty shy. Uh, so I'm going to crack on with telling you all about them. And if they do join me on the sofa by the end of the assembly, it'll be a little treat, hopefully, for everybody. The person I was hoping you might be able to meet is my cat, Freya. I have two cats, both named after Norse or Viking gods. Freya is the oldest one. We've had her the longest. And um, I want to tell you all about her today because she's... Well, here's a picture of Freya when she was a kitten. Ta-da! Look at her. She's very cute, isn't she? You would think uh, butter wouldn't melt. Surely she never does a thing wrong. Very well-behaved, cute-looking cat. Well... Let me show you another photo of Freya when she was a kitten and see whether you change your mind. This is uh, Freya trying to help me with my work when she was a kitten. Ta-da! Yes, you see she does have a cheeky side. And um, let's get rid of that photo. One of the cheekiest things about Freya is, um, well, just kind of how persistent she is about food. You see, Freya loves eating food like many cats do. And um, I actually brought with me today some of her favourite foods to show you. Um, so let's see, what do I have down here? We have, um, right, let's start with uh, this one. Yoghurt. Freya loves a yoghurt. She's very sneaky though because we don't feed her yoghurt because it's not really healthy cat food. She waits till you've eaten a yoghurt and then if you pop the pot down somewhere before you get up to put it in the bin, she sneaks along very sneakily when you're not looking very quietly and she starts licking the yoghurt pot out and you don't even notice until you turn around and there she is with her head in the yoghurt pot. Um, or sometimes she will even like lick the back of the lid if you've popped the lid down while you're eating it. Lick the back of the lid and you find her with it stuck to her face. She loves yoghurts. What else do I have down here that Freya likes? She really likes, um, not dissimilar to yoghurts, she loves a bit of cheese. If a bit of cheese falls out of a sandwich or you leave a bit on your plate before you get the chance to put it in the bin, she will try and gobble that up. She does like a bit of cheese. Uh, what else do we have down here? Not dissimilar, staying on a sort of cheesy theme. She's a big fan of the pasta bake, especially tuna. That's her favourite pasta bake. But she will try and lick out the pasta bake bowls um, after we've had our dinner. Uh, what else do I have down here? Um, I have got this look. I'm glad this is um, still closed. Biscuits. Biscuits. Freya, big fan of the biscuits. Once I came home from the morning school run, taking my daughters to school, and there was a, I'd left a packet of biscuits in my bag, and I thought out of Freya's reach, all wrapped up and twizzled up. When I got back from the school run, the packet of biscuits was on the floor, and she'd eaten one, and there was a half of one left as well. So she's a big fan of biscuits. Also, Freya, big fan of, uh, of croissants, if you ever have fancy French breakfasts. She loves croissants once in the morning. Um, there's four of us that live in the house, and three of them, oh, there's Freya, look. She's heard us talking about her and she knows I've left her some food. Look, she's popped out to eat it. Hooray! She loves croissants. Maybe it was the croissants that brought her out. Because once, everyone in the house, we had four croissants. Four of us live here. Three of them had had their croissants. And uh, I took the girls out to school. My husband went to work. I was going to have my croissant when I got home as a little quiet treat. When I got back, no, it was on the floor. Half eaten. Freya had eaten half of my croissant. Terrible behaviour. Now, perhaps more surprising than biscuits and croissants, one of her favourite dinner dishes to lick out and try and clean for us so we don't have to wash it up, which is helpful, but a bit disgusting, um, is she loves tomato soup. Tomato soup? What kind of cat eats tomato soup? Well, that one does. She loves it. And uh, she will lick out a bowl of tomato soup when you've finished eating it. And you can tell she's been licking it out because she appears in the room and uh, she's got a lot of white fur on her face, only when she's been licking out the tomato soup, it turns a kind of telltale red colour. So she does love tomato soup. Um, and, but perhaps her favourite treat of all, she's spotted all this food on the floor, look. Perhaps her favourite treat of all, I'll prove it, uh, is crisps. She loves crisps. 
pretty much any flavour. She's particularly partial to salt and vinegar, but I don't have any of them. But she will eat a, a smoky bacon crisp if she can get her paws on one. Have a look at this, look. She's gone to snap all that, so I can't have it back. She loves crisps. Now, we don't feed Freya crisps very often because I have checked. They shouldn't do her any harm. They won't poison her or make her poorly, but they're not really very healthy snacks. I mean, they're not healthy snacks for us, are they? And they're also not very healthy snacks for a cat. But she will try her absolute best to get her hands on them. She's very sneaky when it comes to stealing human food. I think she thinks she is a human. And I remember one day I was working at home in this room we're in right now. And just over there, you can't see it, but just kind of off camera, there's um, a waste paper basket where mainly my kids put their rubbish when they can't be bothered going in the kitchen to the big bin and um i was doing my work i suddenly heard this strange noise it kind of went <coughs> and along with that noise there was kind of a rustling noise coming from the direction of the bin so i stopped what i was doing I looked across. Do you know what I saw? I'm going to show you what I saw. Hang on. Here you go. Ready? Ta-da! Freya got her head stuck inside an empty crisp packet because she was licking it out. She'd gone in there looking for snacks, found a crisp packet, fancied the smell of it, stuck her head inside, couldn't get the crisp packet off. She was stuck. Well, obvious. The evidence was right all over her head what she'd been up to. And to be honest, well, as you see from the photo, I, I did find it funny enough to stop and take a photograph before I rescued her. But I very quickly took the crisp packet off her head and rescued her. You see, Freya had got herself in a scrape doing something she shouldn't really have been doing. And um, she didn't ask for help because she's a cat. But I did notice she needed help and I was able to go and rescue her from her crisp packet conundrum and set her free. It hasn't stopped her trying to eat crisps. She still would probably stick her head in a crisp packet. She hasn't learned from her mistakes. But I was able to help her because I noticed she needed the help and I was able to step in. That reminded me a little bit of Jesus because he was really good at being in tune with the people around him and kind of noticing if people needed help, even if they hadn't really asked for it. For example, there was once a man called Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus lived in a place called Jericho and Jesus was going to visit Jericho. Now, everywhere Jesus went, people came out to see him. They'd heard about this man who could do all these miracles. They'd heard he could heal people who were sick. They'd heard he could do amazing things like feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. They had heard that he told the most amazing stories, just that he was the most amazing person you could ever hope to meet. So everywhere he went, crowds would come out and gather at the streets to try and see Jesus as he walked past. Now Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming, but Zacchaeus had a little bit of a problem. You see, he went out with all the crowds to line the streets, but Zacchaeus had something in common with me, actually. He was quite short not very tall at all. And with all the crowds of people in front of him, he could not see a thing. He couldn't see the road. He couldn't see Jesus when he was coming. He couldn't see anything except for the back of people's heads. This was no good. How was he going to see Jesus? Well, you might think if he lived there, why didn't he just like nicely ask the people to let him through to the front? You know, people do that, don't they, in crowds? Sometimes they let short people go through to the front so they can see thing with Zacchaeus was he wasn't very popular. People didn't really like him because Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. Now in those days a tax collector would collect all the taxes, that's the money people owe to the, the powers in charge, and that was lawful to collect that money. But the tax collectors always used to take a little bit extra. So if the Romans who were in charge said collect two gold coins from everybody, the tax collectors would go around and say, four gold coins, please, and take twice as much and then keep some for themselves. And everybody knew that it happened. Everybody knew they shouldn't be doing it. 
but they just got away with it. Nobody did anything about it and the Romans turned a blind eye. So Zacchaeus was robbing the very people who were in the crowd with him. He was taking their money and keeping it for himself. And he was really rich from doing this. He had loads of money while everyone else might have been struggling. So no one was going to let him through to the front of the crowd, were they? So Zacchaeus, he decided he'd better deal with this problem himself. A little bit like Freya going in the bin to look for crisps because she knew I wouldn't give her any. He, um, he went and he found a tree, a sycamore fig tree, and he climbed up it and he sat in the branches waiting for Jesus to come. This was perfect because he could see over everybody's heads. Brilliant. So he's sitting there in the tree looking up the road and eventually he sees Jesus walking down the road past all the crowds of people. I imagine they're all kind of looking and cheering and shouting. Jesus gets closer and closer to Zacchaeus's tree. Zacchaeus is watching him this whole time and then Jesus gets right next to Zacchaeus's tree and he stops and he turns and he looks up and he sees Zacchaeus in the tree as if he knew he was there. Kind of like I knew Freya was in the bin with that crisp packet on her head. Jesus walks through the crowd up to the bottom of the tree and he looks up at Zacchaeus and he says, hey you, come down, I'm gonna come to your house, stay with you. And Zacchaeus comes straight down the tree and says, brilliant, yeah, come on, come home with me. Meanwhile, all the people around Jesus are saying, why is he going to his house? All these people he could have chosen, he chooses him who steals our money. What's that about? thought this guy was meant to be good but Zacchaeus turns to Jesus and says I am gonna give half of everything I own to the poor and anyone I've cheated out of money I'll pay them back four times as much wow and Jesus says today this man has been saved because now he's doing what is right I have come for everybody to save all the lost not just the people you think I should save. Now, interesting thing. Jesus didn't say to Zacchaeus, I will come to your house, but then you have to put right all the wrong that you've done, did he? Jesus saw Zacchaeus, a man who no one liked, a man with no friends, and he reached out to him to be his friend. And that act of kindness was enough to change Zacchaeus's heart. Jesus knew that Zacchaeus needed help and he gave it, even though Zacchaeus didn't ask for it. That's good, isn't it? Now, there's two thoughts I have there. One is that maybe we could all be sometimes a bit like Zacchaeus and a bit like Freya. We might find ourselves stuck with a problem and we're not even really sure whether we need help or who to ask for help. Maybe at those times we could look out for the people God puts around us to help and be thankful to him for sending them. And maybe sometimes we're more like me helping Freya out of the crisp packet or Jesus helping Zacchaeus. Maybe sometimes we notice the other people who need a bit of help and even when they haven't asked for it, and even if maybe we don't really think they deserve it, we could step in and help them anyway, because that one act of kindness might be enough to change their hearts. Something to think about. Going to end with a prayer. So do whatever you do for prayer. You might put your hands together, close your eyes. Um, but please be quiet because I'm speaking to God. You don't have to join in, but if you would like to, you could say Amen at the end. Dear God, thank you that you notice when we need help. Help us to keep our eyes open to see those that you send to help us. Thank you too that sometimes we can be the ones who give the help. Help us to be brave enough to give help to people even when we're not sure they deserve it. Help us to be kind and change their hearts just like you did for Zacchaeus. Amen. Well, now... Freya, I can see, she's just sitting off camera over there and I reckon she has a sneaky eye on this lot of food down here at my foot. So I'm going to go and put this food back in my kitchen cupboard to keep it safe from my snaffily cat because uh, I don't want to be rescuing her from any more crisp packets for the rest of the day. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you again soon.